Oh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's Thanksgiving morning. I'm still tired. The camera's adjusting. I've got a new system again. Trying again. Like I said, we're going to do a little bit of fun, do a little bit of everything else. Um, as most of Mercer County is waking up from a night of final debauchery and going to the moose. Probably a band was playing last night. Several people are in jail this morning. Uh, again, <laughs> many people got bailed out of jail for DUIs last night. Congratulations. You guys are setting the standards again. I'm very proud of Mercer County. We always bragged about how when we were raised, we're the number one <laughs> town in America per capita for alcohol consumption. So... I'm sure last night was none other, no change to the yearly festivities of six o'clock, the parents get home and run to the moose. And I'm not judging because I love it. I miss it. It's one of the funnest times of going back home and at these holidays of Thanksgiving and seeing all my friends and there's a band playing and then getting in trouble because you got in a fight because somebody else got in a fight because they were dancing with somebody's chick and guess who did they call? <laughs> and then all your friends think you're the guy that starts the fights when really you're just defending your buddy again. You know, probably Wellman or somebody, you know, back in the day. But, you know, just, just remembering those times. So good morning, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I sent a lot of people um, some messages about a revolution. Uh, <laughs> before I go into today's agenda, talking about a couple things, it'll get a little bit sappy. I got a good poem at the end for you if you want to stick around. I don't know how long it's going to go today. I got two coffees and I took out my chew for this, so you're welcome. Uh, but... Uh, got some cool things. Going to talk about my family today. A little bit of things uh, that I'm thankful for. Um, I asked some friends. They uh, they were telling me they're like, man, tell some stories. Tell them. I'm like, what do you want me to tell? You know, and and that that sounded awful right there. But I, was, I didn't know what anybody wants me to say, like or talk about. You know, if I'm going to do this, what do you want me to talk about? And they're like, we'll talk about the UFC. A lot of people don't know that. And then I was talking to a friend, and we'll get into that. Tell you some things that's going on with my family, how my Monday started, all right? And uh, give you a little bit of insight on the Triple WD, what would Wessel do? <laughs> that's for me, it's corny. I don't care if you like it or not, it's for me. Because I make myself laugh, and this is more about me than it is you, but hopefully you get something from as well. Uh... I don't know. I can't even read my own writing sometimes. But I got a good list. But I uh, got some good things today. Just want to talk about, go over some things, have some fun. Um, but I sent a message out to a lot of people I like to just, uh, whatever. Just rem I like to remind you maybe, you know. And I said in another video, if I call you a fatty, okay, it's probably, <laughs> it, it might be because you are, but it's also one of those things where I'm, I, I, it's my way of showing. If I'm talking to you or if you take offense to that, if you're watching this, you're a friend of mine. I really, the people that I've invited to this, this channel and everything else, I do pick. I, they, they are a lot of good people. Some people I don't know, but they're related to other people. And so, you know, this, but a lot of them are fighters or people that uh, do jujitsu or in that type of the martial arts community. Um, or from my past, I'm from across the states, and you know I've been hearing from them, and I really love them, and love love to hear from them. But I like that this is kind of bringing people together. But I also like to send messages out to people and send you know I do uh, all the like online training for people, and I'll get into that in a second. But like then I also send some workouts out to people that might need a little bit of motivation or might need some help and everything else. And I send stupid videos. Uh, you'll see sometimes I'll post them. Of where my hair is just out of the blue, like somebody's feeling down for themselves, and so I'll cuss them out, and then they feel wonderful again. <laughs> I'm working miracles here, people. This guy, this guy, I'm telling you, this guy, this, uh, I could not be more proud of myself. You know, I going on about myself, <laughs> I was sending the videos out to people about the revolution. Now, ah. Uh, <laughs> 
I am not aware of a lot of things that go on in the media, the news anymore, because I stopped believing. I stopped believing them. I just listen to podcasts. I listen to the general people I do, like Tim Cast, and I rub my hands because my hands are sore. It's raining out. I've got arthritis. Suck it. Um, by the way, this is not a, like a big friendly show, so make sure your children uh, earmuffs. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. I was talking about the revolution, and my point was when I said that in the video, my friend was like, were you talking about the Rittenhouse thing? And I wasn't even thinking about that. I kind of know, I know a little bit about that. I know enough to know the facts that, uh, man, <laughs> I don't even want to get into it because he, he, he shot like a pedophile that pointed a gun at him. They're all white. He's a racist. We're racist. We're celebrating a racist holiday. All you white people should be hateful or, you know, thankful for, you know, everything you got because you didn't earn anything. It was all given to you. You bunch of racist white people on this racist holiday. And you should all, like, that's how I, I meant to feel. And I'm sorry that I don't feel like that. I don't like the holidays. The holidays ain't a big deal to me. You know, I... Like, I dropped my kid off last night. I was in bed. I wasn't out partying. <laughs> I, was in, I was out. 7 o'clock, out. You know, but, you know, the if... I don't see how people don't see, by watching the media, it directs us in the wrong way. I have plenty of friends that do not look like me. Most of them are white. <laughs> if I get a really good tan going on, you can't tell if I'm Puerto Rican. If I got braids going on, I'm trying to be somebody else. Half my life, most of my life, I've been trying to be a wigger. I don't think that's a racist term to call myself a cracker wigger, is it? Because that's the way I feel. I love, love the African-American culture. I love it. I listen to rap more than most people. Oh, I think I, I get gangster DMX too, but let's go. I'm the worst representative of a white person ever as far as being like a nat, like whatever they want to like. But that's the thing. Like, I don't have people in my life that are racist. I don't have, we all say fucked up shit. We're allowed to. I'm allowed to say some stuff. You know what? Here's the thing. I love cock. Love it. I love, I love cock. I'm a huge fan. Huge fan. This guy. Two thumbs of the guy that loves cock. This guy. How about that? Now I can call you a fag? I've been saying it since the 80s. You know, and, and we're, if it comes, it's meant to be a joke. It's meant to be something humorous. If you don't get the joke, then maybe you don't play on that playground. You can go to other playgrounds. There's playgrounds everywhere else. But bringing how the media does with the racism and who we... We really don't hate each other that much, guys. We don't. The people that hate each other are not the ones that are talking to each other. They're the ones screaming at each other. And they're also the ones that are set up to set this up, to do this, to be these activists and everything else. I, don't, I hope all my friends see the point that I'm saying that I really don't see... I've never treated anybody like that. And I don't allow my friends to treat people like that. When I'm with my friends and we're in a conversation and it's funny, we all know we're safe, whether what color, race, or whatever, or who's debilit, who's disabled. There's blind people we hang out with. There's disabled people we do jujitsu with. All kinds, and they're doing the same jokes. Same jokes. It's all humor, baby. It's all, it's all fun. And sometimes we get a little bit wrapped up and we forget that we're really not against each other. Nobody, there's not one of my friends. We all went to college. We all did our things. And is that white privilege? My friends came from a factory town in Mercer County. Are you kidding me? How many, how many people feel privileged growing up in that town? Huh? We felt privileged when the factory was around before it went to Mexico and screwed up half the damn town for like a decade and a half. But don't, you know, it's a party town anyway. It wasn't like it was. we weren't wasting our funds going drinking and boating every weekend anyway. But, you know, getting back on point because everybody tells me, you know, you get off in space. Well, that's who I am too. But as far as I really don't see 
the hate in America that everybody else is saying on these news channels. I don't see it. I don't see it with my friends. I don't see it in the communities I go to. Um, so maybe maybe other people should start recognizing that and start going, this isn't really true. And maybe we should start talking to our friends that are different nationalities, are different groups, whatever, and start saying, hey, man, do you feel this way? Do I make you feel this way? And clear the air. Say, hey, man, I didn't mean to make you feel this way. But I promise, because here's the thing. If I offend anybody, I really didn't mean to. It was out of my sense of humor. If people say, hey, you need to respect this, you need to respect that, well, you're probably not going to get it from me because now you're demanding it. And in the beginning, I, I was just doing it as a joke. And then I'm, I'm such a child, I will start a stand, and that's how problems start. I need to change that about myself too. But if I say something and it's in jest, and jest means com comedically, funny. I try to be a funny, humorous person. If I say something and I offend you, I really didn't mean to. My, my intention was not to hurt you, and I think a lot of people are like that. Sometimes there's a lot of race. I see a lot of stupid people too. Don't get me wrong. You know, I, I see a lot of idiots out there that are that are genuinely racist. And they, they you know what? Here's the funny thing. It's I generally there's it's the older people. And, you know, guess what? They're gonna die. They'll be gone soon. So we'll, you know, we'll be all better when the dead old people racists go away. But I don't believe that's happening. As much as as much hate as it said. I know that it happens. I know it happens. But I'm saying as far as communities, as far as the community I live in, there's there's some shady mo mofos here. You know, I get it. You know, uh, we are in the Bible Belt. There is there is still some of that. I mean, hell, they still hate Yankees. They help to hate the North and the South here. I mean, in Jonesboro, I've never been called a Yankee so much in my life. So I understand. I'm... I'm a little bit jaded. They brought it up in court. <laughs> they said it in two of my divorces, you know, and my custody hearing. He's not from here. He's from the North. They said that in court. So there's a little bit of, you know, I understand. That's that's the communities you grew up in. But for the most part, even if people have that hatred in their heart, I think it's subsided because if you just do the right thing and be nice to people, Generally, even if they don't like you, I hope they're nice to you and they walk on because there's not a time where anybody that I know that it would be a female or male that wouldn't would hear something said that would be crazy where they wouldn't turn around and say something. I know a lot of my friends would, you know, and so I feel that there are a lot of communities and the friends that I have, other friends in the groups and else, the people that I hang out with really don't feel this way. And so when I sent out that text message of the revolution, it wasn't about Rittenhouse. It wasn't anything else. What it was about was the revolution. If you've seen, I sent you two workouts before that. The revolution against your fat ass. <laughs> that's, so I didn't mean to get all political. And that, that's the point. I, I was talking about you guys not being lazy and fat no more. I'm seeing my speaker go up to red. I know that my voice, I've got to get used to this. You know, hopefully this is a good copy or maybe I have to trash that part. But we're going to go on with it. So that's the revolution. But then um, a kind of funny thing, you know, just people were talking about the videos and everything else. And I put a, posted a video of these these protein balls I do. And, uh, and I put my balls. And it was just, you know, I know it's a cheap jab and I need to be a little bit more grown up. But I want to bring up something real quick and I'll show you something. Okay, uh, during this holiday season, we all love the Grinch, we all love Christmas. Everybody loves Christmas, don't they? Well, as one person said, man, Mike, don't do that, it's cheap. I know it's a cheap joke, I know, but everybody loves Alex Baldwin before he shot somebody, sweaty balls, okay? Everybody loved the SNL skit, the sweaty ball skit and all that. Okay, and I was just doing my holiday balls, and I put my balls. Okay, and somebody, you know, they're just like, hey, you know, be easy. And, of course, it was a female, and, of course, uh, they have, I know. <laughs> Thank you for the feedback, but it's all in fun and jest. 
But I did want to show you all something very interesting as I was going into Walmart the other day. Okay? As I put a funny Christmas holiday festive balls and I get called out that it's this. This is an ad for pistachios with the Grinch. And I quote, green and salty, just like my nuts. $3.99. Pretty big bag of his nuts, don't you think? I think we all need to calm down. Because the Grinch's nuts is in Walmart, all at your kids' levels faces. <laughs> Did you think about that? Think where that sign is. That sign's not eye level to us. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, anyway, that's what I'm talking about, okay? Lighten up. Lighten up. We're all going to see things and hear things that bother us. Lighten the fuck up. Chill out. All right. Um, especially, take it easy on the gingers. You know, we, we all know, God, they just have a, they have a tough life. They have a tough life, those redheaded people. Only speaking to one. Oh, I was going to talk about this before I went into the meaning of my holidays and the thank yous and everything else. I was on the way home, all right, and uh, I was list. I always listen to music or podcasts or something. I've, I've really not listened to music, and I I just kind of played an old playlist. And there's a Kanye West song, "Fade," and uh, it's like I feel it fade. It's 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 a good song. It's very pump, you know. It, it's a good little maybe workout song. So I was added to my playlist, got home, and uh, I hit I, I hit it to watch it on the TV because I wanted to see the playlist that I kind of made or whatever. And that song Fade come on, and my God, there's a female in there. I forgot about this video. Oh, Kanye did a, the world. This woman dances, but her body is like what every woman wants to look like. And what every man wants to touch once. <laughs> just one time, just, I just want to touch it. I just want to I can just, can I just, just touch. Not in, I wasn't being gross. I was saying just touch because that woman's fantastic. I don't know who she is. I don't want to be a stalker, but my God, I know that video is like 10 years old. I completely forgot about it. So there's a side note. People are going, you jump topic to topic, whatever. Taking a drink. Of my, that is bourbon flavored coffee. It's not bad. It's not bad. I'm not a big aftertaste guy, but that, yeah, yeah it's all right. Uh, I have a toasted coconut as well. I'm a big coffee guy. So I, anytime I see coffee on sale, I go grab a couple bags just to try it. You know, sometimes it fails, sometimes it's good. But, uh. Before I go into some stories about like what they people ask me to talk about, and they're you know I'm going to talk about how I got to the UFC, and uh, they asked me what my favorite part was, how I got to the UFC, what my favorite part was, and uh, I wrote some notes down, and uh, I want you to watch the fight, but I was going to explain uh, what the meaning of holidays are to me because a lot of people that are around me, that are my friends or everything else, they're like, Mike, you know, you, you can come hang out with me because my family's in South Carolina, Kentucky, Ohio, most of everybody, and, you know, I've been everywhere, and, you know, when my son's not with me, people do generally feel bad, but they don't understand. Most of my life, I've been competing. So, like, today and tomorrow, most people eat if they're training for a fight, but will go train because everybody's off work today and tomorrow. So they're training all weekend Hard or anything else, either it's fighting or whatever it is. If you know, a lot of times it's play, they're still in football. I was coaching and everything else, so holidays have always maybe been in a hotel for me for a lot of my life. And I really, I really don't buy into it, it's not a big deal to me. I, I think it's, a, I don't like forced things, obviously. When people, you know, I said earlier, when people tell me to do something, I generally don't. If I go to get you a gift, it's because I got it for you. It's not because the day says, and I'm trying to out-compete my friend or what they got their wife and they got this, and it's all this bullshit that doesn't really mean anything anyway because it was just somebody told you to do it. So that's what holidays mean to me. You know, it's not this racist white guy that grew us up or the guy that, you know, helped build our colony and helped get us where we are because if you look at history, every 
every culture is killing every culture to be where they're at. You know, so when people say give your land back, it's like, well, to who? You know, the Apaches killed everybody else, all the tribes before them. And the tribes before them killed all the tribes before them. And the tribes before them killed all the tribes before them. Something to think about. But that's kind of how the holidays are for me. I, I That's not Jesus' real birthday to me. You know, it's a symbol. I get it, I guess. Um, I'm glad that people have this time together. I'm glad that... We can all have a time and be together and you get extra holiday discounts if you pay attention. I usually take him on a trip or something. You know, we go do something fun for the holidays just because that's the way I like to celebrate. We go to an indoor water park or whatever else. And, um, no, I, <laughs> but that's, that's kind of the, I, I appreciate the time you can get with your family and everything else. But a lot of the holidays I see people, man. Everybody's just rushing and, and just, they're so, they get more stressed out. It's like, man, it's supposed to be a, like a partial vacation, fun, have a good time. And I know the people back in my hometown always had a great holiday parties. People were going house to house. So maybe, maybe that is the way it is, you know, at other places. But, you know, I, I, I or that I'm just missing out and they're like, you know, I don't go to holiday parties. So I, I, I you know, even the invites, I just kind of like, I don't want to go see other people's have be part of that. I just like, this is my time to decompress, you know? And so got some things going on where anyway, I got to take care of my shoulders. So it, uh, but back to the, the meaning of holidays. I think sometimes we do a lot of things because we're forced to, and we build up all this pressure to make it perfect and make it so happy and make it all these, we're trying to make them every fucking Thanksgiving. Well, we've had a lot. We'll have another. Let's, let's chill out. Let's be nice to each other. Let's enjoy that holiday. You know, let's enjoy going shopping for the same price shit that was yesterday. They just marked it up and act like they priced it down. Let's, you know, let's, let's, let's chill out and have a little bit of fun. You know, I, I, I get on people about watching so much football because I used to, and it's kind of like, man, I wasted so much time. But today is a good day to hang out with dad and today is, you know, talk about people and get together. And as long as it's not under pressure, you don't have to make everything such a heavy memory. You'll have memories. They just come naturally. Sit on the couch and shut the fuck up. Maybe have a conversation and listen, you know, and, and make memories that way. Make them civil. Let people finish their point. Even if you disagree with them, don't wait for your ammo to go fucking shoot it down. I love that. That's just the way I like to argue with, too. But, you know, I do give people the chance to talk and hear their point. You know, so if, if don't make a holiday a bad memory. Make it a good memory, you know. And having said that, you know, I want to thank some people. Um, first, I want to thank my clients because <laughs> you make really this possible. Like, uh... I've been doing the online training. I've pe got people in South Carolina, Tennessee, Colorado, Texas, California, Washington, but that, he's a freebie. Um, <laughs> he's just out of love, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that also, um, there's Ohio, Ohio and Michigan. I got to think. And then just around here too. Doing the online training, me sending you videos, workouts, diet stuff and everything else. Um, I appreciate you and you enjoying me and having as much fun as we do. It really is fun. I, I thank you. You guys lift me up. You really do. Every day is so, it is fun. It is fun for me to get up and think of different ways to, to mess with you guys and to wake you up different ways. Or sometimes it's always not that exciting because I know that you're beat up and you really don't want to hear my shit. And then sometimes you ignore me for a couple days. Yeah, I understand. I, I mean, I send people with the workouts that I do, and I just sent them out two workouts that I do, and a lot of the responses is, there's no way I can just start where you can, man. I understand. I do a little bit more than what most people do, and it's fun for me. You know, so do take what you can. You know, if you don't know what anything that says, ask me. I'll tell you. You know, I love working with people. My clients are very important to me. I love the stories. I love you telling me 
that I help you in some way. That you can call me or message me, even when it's about, like, you can you can reach out to me and tell me your personal shit, and you know that I'm going to give it back to you the truth. If you're an asshole, I'm going to tell you you're being an asshole. If you're in the right, you're going to tell you you're being the right, but maybe how to handle it. You know, a lot of people, you know, I don't care what a lot of people say. Like, I've done a lot of fucked up shit. I've, I've screwed up a lot of my life, and, you know, and <laughs> I've had a good-ass time while I was doing it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> COVID. Um, no, I love my life. You know, I, I love my failures and my scripts and I'll tell you about them all. I don't care. You know, I, it's put me, it's made me who I am. It's made me be able to laugh about my mistakes and the fun that I've had. And, and, and I'm able to share that with the clients that I have. And for the most part, they've known me or followed me or, you know, you know, knew me in high school or knew me, you know, it, it's great. I love when you guys reach out. Thank you so much. I mean, people that just had kids reaching out, people that just, you know, and, and I like to influence, and not influence, but, you know, I, I forgot the word right now, but inspire, I guess, you to be better because you can. Everybody can. It's not that hard. You just got to try a little bit more. Change something every day. Do better. Do better. Do better. And that's what I was talking about the revolution earlier. It's like, man, it's the revolution of, of not being a fatty. And by fatty, I mean you not reach your goals. You're slow. You're, you're, you're taking your time. You're giving yourself excuses. You're everything. Oh, this reason. This reason. Well, this and this and this and that. No, you're just not doing it. You know, and that's what I mean by fatty. But, you know, and I call my clients that. You know, if, if you get on, if you like, Mike, help me out and you can't handle me going, hey, you're fucking stupid. What are you doing eating a whole goddamn box of Nutty Buddies followed by a Chaser of Jim Beam followed by a whole goddamn pizza, you fat shit? Like, what? how do you describe that? <laughs> or, or I ate a whole package of Oreos. And I am an Oreo fan. I used to eat the middle of the devil stuffed Oreo and my wife liked the cookie part. So I gave her the cookie part. So, oh my God, I was an expert at getting that. Uh, 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 I would eat them. However, <laughs> I digress. I'm sorry. Get used to me losing track people. Um, thank you to my clients. I really do. It's fun. I have so much fun with you guys. You have no clue. Even making your workouts. And I do. I get in there. I'm like, God, I got to write another fucking workout. They're not going to do it. They ain't going to do the whole thing. You know, and I, I doubt you. I, as I'm writing the workouts, I'm like, these motherfuckers ain't going to do this shit. But hey, if I don't put it down, I won't put the effort. You won't either. So I appreciate the effort you give back to me. The guys that are getting their heart rate up. The guys that are working harder to get and following what I'm saying. And they're changing their lives, losing weight. They're directing, and I appreciate, like, oh, I like to hear success. I just like to hear you win. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love fucking winning. I, I, oh, I love it. In any way, you know, I love hearing that, you know, you got a fucking interview, and you knocked it out of the park, and you're probably going to be a new man. I don't want to say it online. I'm happy for you. Like, I'm proud of my people. So thank you for giving me that. I love it. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, I know everybody gets offended by that word, but that's how, that's my passion. Don't take that from me. Don't tell me that I'm saying one word that offends you that takes this. Because I make everybody else feel fucking good, man. They're getting jobs. They're changing their lives. They're getting homes. Their, their bodies are changing. They've lost weight. 22 pounds, 11 pounds, 17. Off the top of my head. And that's the ones that measure and keep track. But whatever, you do your own thing. But I thank you. Thank you. It, it's My day is so happy because you pay me to help you change your life and be happy. And I, I appreciate you putting me in that, in your hands. So, thank you. Stay in the process, man. Love this process. Never, I love this process. I love the process of, okay, I, 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 I'm, before I go into the, my, the next segment was going to be like stories, 
before I go into that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what happened. I, I tore my rotator muscles right here. And so I can't raise my arm. I, 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 I can't turn my wrist right now. Yeah, that, I, that, I, I can do it. Mm, let it. Let it stretch out a little bit. I don't want to keep doing it. But it's hurt. So um, <laughs> I heard it the other day on my new bag. I, I got a little ridiculous. I made him a short video of it thanking Brad for hooking it up. But then I, I tore my shoulder. So hey, whatever. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, yeah, it's not good. It's, I, I can't lift it from elbow to wrist. So it's right here. I, I've had a couple people look at it yesterday when I was in Little Rock and it's not detached. So, but saying that being in this process, that didn't stop me. My immediate thought was, well, I'll tell you about my Monday, but this happened on Monday too. And, uh, I'll tell you about that later, but. Um, my immediate thought was, man, you could do your left side. You could always get better. Oh, you can switch to southpaw. You need to work on your southpaw stance with your power, you know, and how I could get better, what I could still do. I can make my legs beastly during this time. I can get better in something. I can still work on my abs. I can just hang my arm right here and do everything I can, what I need to do, weightlifting, whatever. So looks like we're going to be left-handing it. We're going to be doing a stranger for a little bit. <laughs> I hope you get that. I know I don't like the camera focuses. I see it, I know, but we're already into our Thanksgiving Day parade. But like I said, thank you to my clients. Also, thank you for the people that reach out to me and you know tell me you know that they appreciate me. You know, and and just my friends and everybody else. I, I really do. Much love. I, I feel the energy. I feel the love. So, um, since you guys have asked me, and I, I'll give a quick, I asked some people, like, what do you want to hear? They're like, tell me the stories about the UFC, and tell me about how you got there, and what was your favorite part? Um, and a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine, uh, you know, she was talking to me, and she said, you know, I'm embarrassed. Like, people will ask me, like, you know, what did my, you know, what Mike say about the UFC? And she's like, I didn't know Mike then. Like, that wasn't Mike. Mike's not, Mike wasn't, that wasn't part of my life that I know Mike. And so, and that's the thing. If you ever hear somebody say that I was bragging about fighting or something, they're lying. Because if anything, I was asked a question and told a story. And if you hear me, I like to tell some pretty good stories and what's funny is people are like oh it's like embellishing things no i lost left out a lot of shit <laughs> there's a lot of stuff and details i couldn't tell you so if you hear a story from me yes i understand it's crazy but most people that were there will say that's absolutely true you know and and so it's uh <laughs> so i i was i never get asked or and i never talk about it myself so if, if, you know, if you're offended that you don't know anything about me, I mean, I don't really talk to my parents about it. I don't know that I've talked to anybody about those stories and those personal experiences and everything. I know I had a, I had a special assignment one time where I had to talk about my uh, favorite part and it was cool that I was asked. So, um, I was asked, you know, how did you get in the UFC? And, uh, I was training at Westside in Little Rock with uh, Roy Degato and Matt Hamilton. And I mean, they got a, they got a game of, I mean, Hillary Williams is a, like a 20 time world champion jujitsu doctor. I mean, she's a savage, you know, they've got TJ out of there. They got, uh, oh my God, they got everybody. I, for, I forget names right now. And uh, you know, Bryce Mitchell, that's ever recent, but the first stable is like Doc Kleinbeck, who's my provider. Um, Oh, shit. Um, I got to stop doing that. But, you know, the Roy Delgado was in the UFC. Matt Hamilton's fought before there was fighting. He was like the original pride fighter, but just smaller. Uh, like a Dan Severn, just a mini version, redheaded, short little angry little redheaded guy he is. But uh, <laughs> they were my coaches. And uh, Roy was on the Ultimate Fighter, I think, season eight. And so I went out to Vegas with him and I was there for his fight and I was, you know, in his corner or whatever. And, um, and 
I is at the weigh-ins for UFC, the Ultimate Fighter season. They, I forget the coaches. I think it was Mir and them. Mir was the coach. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Because that's why UFC ninety two. Okay, that that makes sense. Because Mir fought Nogueira at UFC ninety two, and so I was behind the weigh-ins, and me and Matt were talking while Rollie's off doing some stuff, and Dana White and Joe Silva were standing like twenty feet away from me. And uh, me and Matt were talking, and Matt kind of said, he goes, dude, right there's Dana White. Like, and we kind of were talking. I was like, man, I'm just going to go over there. He's like, yeah, go over there. Go. You know, I was like, so I went over there, and I just introduced myself. And I said, hey, you know, my name is Mike Wessel. Joe Silva was the matchmaker for the UFC at that time. Now, this is UFC uh, Tough Ultimate Fighter Season 8. I don't know what season they're on now. I never watched them. Um, <laughs> I never did. And, uh... Uh, uh, season 8, and this UFC 92 was the next UFC. So this is November, early December. Yeah, it was, it was December, like December 14th or something. And uh, so it's season 8 finale, and Roley fights, and I go up to, at the, at the weigh-ins, and I go up to Joe Silva, the matchmaker, and Dana, I'm like, hi, my name's Mike Wessel. You know, if you ever need a fight, let me know. Um, I'm ready to go at any time. You know, I've not fought since August. I've been training. And I fibbed. I acted like I was training. I took that. I was training but half-assing it. I wasn't really training like I... Because no one would fight me at that time. I was having problems getting fights because I knocked everybody out at that time. And so, like, it was really... I, I thought, man, I'm going to have time. I, I can get ready. And, and I didn't listen to my coaches, for one. I should have been ready. And that's one of the biggest... Hardships about my career, like I, I left that I won. I'm gr glad that I won. You know, my last jujitsu tournaments, fights, and all that stuff. But it's, I wish I would have listened to him at that time and stayed training and hard because that set me up. That time I didn't know it was going to happen. Just by luck, I ran into Joe Silva and Dana White behind by themselves, where I could give myself an opportunity to say hi. They heard of me. They're like, "Wes, well, we know who you are." They knew my record. Yeah, they're like you're eight and one. Yep, good. You just won against the guy that you lost to. We know who you are, and we'll give you a call. Thank you, and blah, blah, blah. It was just very brief, very quick, and very exciting. You know, so Roy goes on, and we, we, we leave, and I think I got back on a Tuesday, and uh, I got a call from uh, Joe Silva saying, hey, we need these medicals. You're going to fly back out to Vegas, and you're, uh, you're going to fight Anthony Hardon. He's ranked number nine in the world, and you're going to fight him on, I think it, like, it was nine days notice, and he was ranked number nine in the world, <laughs> and you think, man, you get your shot, though, dude, fuck yeah, man, like, let's go, my fault, like, this is what I tell all the fighters and all the people, when people tell you to be ready, be the fuck ready, because you're going to get your chance, especially a journeyman like me, especially a guy that I, at times I was on, at times I wasn't. You know, depending on what was going on in my life is basically what fighter you got out of me. And, you know, I should, I, that's my biggest regret is I didn't train like I was constantly on it. And if I was, if you watch that fight, I'm going to tell you to. I'm going to explain some things here in a second. But um, I took, like, I, I ended the round, and I'll talk about it in a second. But I had my opportunity, man. I should have won that fight if I had been ready. And I wasn't ready. Then that's one of my biggest regrets of my life is, is I, and after that fight, you, you will never, you never see me get tired again. I was always on my cardio. Even when I didn't have a fight coming, even when I wasn't going to fight no more, I was, I'm still doing my cardio now because you never know. <laughs> I want to be ready because you know what? That was a giant lesson. The UFC called him, man. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And I didn't belong there anyway. <laughs> I'd only been training and fighting like a year and a half. My amateur and pro career was that long, like a year and a half. Like I fought six fights in like six months. And then that was my amateur career. And then my, my pro career, my first night I fought, I fought in a heavyweight tournament and fought three fights the first night I fought pro. You know, so... And I didn't know nothing. I wish I knew now what I knew then type thing, but oh well. But, you know, that's how I got to the UFC. And then that set me up for the fight for UFC 92. Okay, and I fought Anthony Hardunk. And I'm going to tell you some, uh, some things. They asked me, what was your favorite part about being in the UFC? 
And I remember, so oh, I love it. I still get so, because it's, ah, oh, it was so awesome. Because I had a song, it's called Let's Go, was my walkout song uh, to UFC 92. And, and you know, I was the, that was the fight, fight number five, okay? So I was the, or six, I was the fight right before the main card started. But at the end, at the UFC that time, they kind of showed the best fight of the prelims at the end if there was extra time well there was and they showed that fight and it was me i got to be i got a bonus check and shit at that time was different you know than what they do now but um they showed a, the extra fight of the prelims after to fill that uh pay-per-view time slot and it was my fight against hard knock because they, they and i appreciate the words they ever said but my favorite part about the ufc was walking out because like you hear uh, Bert, 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 this black uh, gentleman, he was, he was the lead, lead dog. He knew everything. He was, <clears throat> he was awesome. He pumped you up. He made you feel good. He didn't know any. He knew your name. He knew every statistic about you. He goes, come on, Juggernaut. It's your time, Juggernaut. Whoa, Juggernaut. It's your And he was like, how the fuck does this guy know? He said, yeah. You see that? It's that cold chill. It's like, yeah, we're going to go to war. Oh. <laughs> And it was like, oh, and you, I'm not even out of the fucking tunnel yet, man. You know, my song's not even played. And that was my favorite part. That was my favorite part. My song played. And it was the, uh, it was the let's go. The, I was like, oh, dun, 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 let's go. If you want it, you can get it. Let me know. And I'm walking out in Vegas. Is, I'm in the MGM Grand, baby. I'm on that, I'm on that banner. I'm on that banner, homie. That MGM Grand, the clinch gear. I can't see it because I'm a horrible. There it is, man. And it was such a powerful moment, man. It was such an awesome thing because that music turned on. And I'm walking down and people were taking pictures and giving you high fives. I didn't belong there. I didn't belong there. I knew nothing. I knew nothing of jujitsu. I knew nothing of boxing. I was just a powerful dude that lifted weights from sixth grade on. That can squat a house. I was massive back then. I just did nothing but squat, power cleans, and bench my whole life. You know, I was such a, like, and that's how I got there. Is I didn't earn my shot at the table of the elite because I was talented. I earned my shot because I worked my ass off. And that's what my regret was about that was because I worked my ass off and I took a break when it, my shot came. But man, when you walk out of that, that the MGM, the crowds are like, whoa, you're lit on fire. Then the song plays. You go through all these emotions. Like, man, I cry. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah. It's like, I'm a big crier. My nose, I cry. I don't give a shit. You know, it's like, if, if you really, if I'm crying and I'm shaking, that means I'm probably wanting to kill you <laughs> or somebody near. So if I'm crying, you see tears in my eyes and I'm not <laughs> like not an emotional, that's a, that's not a good thing for people. That means I'm restraining myself the best I can and I'm waiting for somebody to mess up. But if I'm crying emotionally, that means I'm very happy because I'm a psychopath. <laughs> but uh, going back to the walkout, so you, like I walk in the cage. I remember seeing Seth, Rolly, and Matt. Josh Black was there, I think, too. Yeah, he was there with us too, I think. Or was the other trip, and uh, you know, I told him thank you, and I, I thanked him, and I was, I was, it was the first time like I looked in the crowd, and I walk in, and guess who's there, man? Bruce motherfucking buffer, <laughs> like Bruce, he called my name, Bruce. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. It's like when he called my name, like, and I, I want to explain this because my mom got mad at me. She knows she she goes, you gotta stop saying that about God, about the you felt like a God. And there's no other way to describe it because when Bruce turns to you and points at you and says the juggernaut, my, the juggernaut, you're like, yes, I'm going to kill everybody. I'm going, I'm a God. I'm a God for just a second, just for right now. I'm an arena. I'm just like the gods. I'm one of them. I'm a warrior. Like I'm here. Let's go. Whoa, motherfuckers, let's kill. They gave me a license to do it. I'm going to die today, baby. I'm going to die. That's, that's emotion. That's hard. That's rage. That's pure. That's everything. 
That's one to smash. And um, you see in that fight, uh, go watch UFC 92, Mike Wessel versus Anthony Hardon. And I did really well. I did I did better than what is expected. I avoided his, that guy's leg kicks. Man, he got me with a half a leg kick. I was drinking beer in the in the by the in the way home on the plane because I couldn't stra- bend my knee. <laughs> so they let me stand up and sit in the back because I couldn't bend my knee. He got half of a kick on me, and, uh, and I couldn't imagine if he got a full one, he would have broke my damn leg. The guy was savage. The guy Andy Hardog was one of the hardest kicking sons of bitches ever, and he ended people's fights like that. Like just by kicking the leg, people would just stop. And uh, but <laughs> sorry. I got off track, of course, but uh, no, Hard Knock was such a such a game opponent, and you see in that fight, I do really well, and I end the round in mount like we're struggling. I I got I, I didn't like I said. You see my my rookie, my greenness. I didn't know much about jujitsu. I really I let him sweep me, and I know I shouldn't have got swept, but I just wasn't in that transition. I just wasn't used to it. I was just you know I was I, was, I just wasn't ready, and I was put there anyway. You know, I end the round in mount. I'm getting ready to strike, and bam! I was like, "Oh, I, I was tired." And if you watch, my friend, that same friend that watched, that said, "I know nothing about your career," and it's kind of embarrassing because people ask me, and they know that we know each other real well. And like, and I don't know nothing. And and I, she watched that fight with me, and I said, "No, I want you to watch this." <laughs> I was like, "And I want people to watch UFC 92 because I want you to see something." I take. Knees to my dome, man. I take knees to my face, just bah, bah. Oh, I don't. I I'm too tired to defend them, but I'm just gonna go and 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 here's the thing that I love about me. Uh, you know, of course I love everything because I'm awesome. But and everybody knows that I I tease people like that. But I, I that was my shot. I got my shot, man. I got my fucking shot. And you best believe I was going up my fucking shield, man. Watch that fight. Watch UFC 92. And see if you don't see a kid. You won't recognize me in that. I don't even look like I do now. I look nothing like I do now. I look like that without a mustache. (laughs) Baby faced and different body, different everything. But I had my shot, and by God, that guy was going to have to kill me that day. I, I I went till I couldn't. I remember being on my stomach and getting, and the punches weren't hurting me. It wasn't like pain, but I couldn't move. I couldn't lift my arms no more. My body couldn't move no more. I couldn't move. He got me. He killed me. So if there's arena of life, if it was the gladiators, the God that I felt like it made me feel was defeated and killed. But, you know, if you watch that fight, I watched it several times and I'm proud of myself. Because by God, I got a chance. And I was gonna, uh, I died that day. I did everything I could to win. I did everything I could with the opportunity I had that I, that's that's why my biggest regret is I knew to be ready and I wasn't. And so, if you can take anything from that, when people are saying, hey, prepare, 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 get ready, get ready and you're not, you're going to have a big regret. You know, especially if you're an athlete. Especially if you're an athlete around Arkansas. They don't take you serious. You know elite people come out of Hicksville over here. You know, and of course, I'm not from here, so they didn't expect it to come. And Rolly's not from here, so they didn't expect it to come from, you know, the West Side Gym that produced probably five or six, seven got UFC fighters. And not, you know, several, I know they got tons more, but I'm just ignorant. Of course, getting set. But there are some UFC stories for you. Um, so if you don't like me, go watch UFC 92. You can see me get need. In the face of plethora of times. Anthony Hardon laid it down that day, I'll tell you. <coughs> but, oh, that was such a great time. It set me up for a lot of things in my life. You know, it, it put me in a really great place. 
as far as, you know, different things that I just don't need to mention. They put, you know, <laughs> it, 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 you know, it, it gave me a little bit of jump start and then uh, I was just too stupid to stay on top. You know, a lot of times you wish you had the skills now or then that you had now. And, uh, you know, but I was a kid from Solano, Ohio, man, Mercer County on UFC 92. And everybody didn't expect me to be there. And when they watched that, because at that time, UFC 92 was like the biggest card because there's Noguera versus Mir, which are both jujitsu badasses. I think mirrors. That's the one. Mirror broke something of Noguera. His arm, maybe. I think. Okay. And then uh, a Rampage versus Silva, which was the third fight they had from Pride. Now it was because they were the. Uh, I think they were no, they weren't the. What was Rampage versus something? They had a, that Pride beef before. So Rampage versus Silva, Noguera versus Mirror, and Force versus Rashad. And my locker room was everybody that lost, <laughs> including me. Forrest lost. I think Noguera was in there. He lost. And uh, Rampage was in my locker room, and he lost. Oh, no, no. No, Silva was in my locker room, and he lost. But, I mean, I, I get it mixed up a little bit. I know the ones that lost were in my corner because I lost, and that's the whole locker room lost that night. Whatever, blue or red. But, no. Uh, I want to... Um, Kind of give you a, an up and down story of my of my Monday, um, because I always told people you know pick your shit up you know, like you know I'm always like dude man get out of that fucking zone and Monday, um, you know my family is going through a lot right now I, not so much me but my mother, um, dealing with a lot of loss. A granddaughter and a daughter right now. And my dad dealing with those same things. Then my dad having cancer for the second time. And, uh, you know, more more things in the family. You know, and, and that's the thing. My life is good. I'm in a great place. Nothing's affecting me. It's all what my family has to deal with. So, you know, I, I, I spend a lot of time on the phone Monday, talking to lawyers, talking to my mom, talking to my dad, dealing with what needs to be taken care of, what needs to be, what goes next, here, this, this, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, so that, that puts you in a negative mindset. I really, I seen myself, I, I like to chew and I, when I put a chew and I always notice that I start to not want to work out or not be active because that nicotine, man, it makes you not want to do those things, especially if you're in a negative mindset. And so all that family stuff was going on and then my shoulder was killing me because I tore it. And it was like, oh, God, like, my life's ending. Like, I'm not going to be able to do the, like, I wanted, my goal was to do bare knuckle boxing a couple matches and then bare knuckle fighting, you know. And then, um, I don't know what the other thing was. Uh, oh, I was going to go to Ohio. And then I decided because of my shoulder and everything else going on. And I, I just didn't want to go and drive and, and just be, I just, uh, just wasn't the right time. And, and so... I was just kind of like, I, I came home, I was like, you know, just, I was feeling that, what everybody tells me, you know, when they, when they talk to me or call me and, you know, when we're, when we're conversating and you're telling me, you always, they tell me that, they, you know, they're sad. I was feeling depressed. I was feeling down on myself. I was feeling like, but poor me, that was the Eeyore, nobody, you know, it's always sad. It's always, you know, and, and I laughed at myself. I was like, what would Mike fucking Wessel say to himself right now? Like if, if, if my... If I was one of my people, my clients, what would I say to them? And I was like, get the, f shut the fuck up, you bitch. You're fine. Shut the fuck up. Get the fuck on the elliptical. Go do what you can. Do what you can. And I can't, my watch keeps fucking up right now. And I, I'm sorry I use cuss words all the time, but it makes me mad. My watch keeps hitting the back of my wrist and so it turns off it turns on it's always on so I'm just I'm fed up with dealing because I feel like I don't get a workout unless I have my watch on and then when I have to fuss with my watch all the time it frustrates me more so we're dealing with that as well and it's just not fair <laughs> life's not but get the fuck on the elliptical go change your life go do something 
Do the, finish the laundry now. Go finish the dishes. Go finish the things that you need to do that you're going to have to do tomorrow. Because, you know, just an incident the other day, I was like, work through it. Keep working. Stay on it. Now's the time to keep going, going, going. And they did. And I knew what would happen. Now they're so caught up, they have nothing to do. They're like, I have nothing to do. I'm like, well, perfect time to day drink. <laughs> but that's the thing. You know, my money was bad. And I was like, man, just get a six pack. Your shoulders hurt and everything's bad. You know, blah, poor, poor me. And I was thinking, man, now I'm going to drink when I want to drink. When I feel it's a safe spot, where I feel with my friends, family, especially with my parents. Um, or if I'm home in Ohio, I feel safe there. Or if I'm here and a friend comes and we do a podcast, I might have a few drinks. But I'm not saying that I wouldn't, but I'm going to take care of my shit the next day like I didn't. You know? But what I'm saying is, like, my need to spend this weekend drunk and day drinking is not needed. I need to get some things done. So I, I was like, man, I wrote a list of things. I need to paint my house. I need to get all my pictures back up on the wall. I have pictures of everything I've ever done and family and and my and me everything me and Talon have ever done. That's my favorite part about it. I have these giant pictures, and, and they're everywhere you walk in my house. It's a picture of a memory, and and I've got to get that done. I got to paint my walls and finish my kitchen, and I can't do that day drinking all day. I can't do that being depressed all day. I need to get these goals done so that I'm caught up. So when I'm ready to get savage again with my arm. I can. So I'm not going to get off my goals. That's what Mike Wessel would tell himself is quit being a fucking bitch. Go in there, do what you can, work out how you can. Your watch isn't working tough shit. Go work out. You know, and you said, oh, well, go work out. Get it better. Make a list of goals that if you can't do something right now, make a list of goals and then go do those goals. You can have a couple drinks if you want while you're doing it. I'm not going to, but you can. This is coffee. It's that bourbon flavored stuff in it. It leaves that taste like a stone cold creamery smell. I I love ice cream. Don't get me wrong. I'm a ice cream fiend. But that stone, it's it's that. It lingers. I'm not a big fan. Too too much. I'm glad I'm not hating on their product there. But anyway, uh, I think that's enough for me today. I'm going to leave you with one more thing. Hopefully you're enjoying your Thanksgiving. Hopefully I didn't. All right, if I offended you. Please, hey, make comments. Leave messages. If I did offend you, give me your opinion. You can see on the other day, people, um, a lady that I always tease, and she, you know, we message back and forth, but she put it on there about me saying the GD and damn it or whatever. And I don't mean to. It's just part of my language. I'll try my best. Not to do those things. But if I do it, how about get off my nuts? Okay, I'm going to try my best to clear up my language. But if I do it, don't, you know, remind me, hey, Wes, well, it's fine, whatever. But say something that can maybe better the show with me. I appreciate that. I'll, you know, but um, also, you know, leave your feedback. Tell me some topics to talk about. What do you want to hear me say? Uh, I'm going to end with a poem. Um, and then I'm just going to cut, cut the recording and be done for the day. Uh, you know, this is Thanksgiving. Be thankful that you're with your family. Be thankful that you're here. Maybe you're not with your family, but you're alive. Be thankful you got another day. Be thankful you have the opportunity. And I always say this, give people, uh, I, I know I say this too much on these, but give people an opportunity. Even if they're not what they say they are. If you got that dollar, if you got that five dollars and you know you can make more. Give people the opportunity. Okay? That's, I mean, we can't help our society and we can't help ourselves as people if we don't give a shit, don't, or keep giving a shit and holding it all to ourselves. You know, give, give, give a little bit back. It'll come to you. You'll be fine. Five bucks ain't nothing to you. You're going to make more. Everything's going to be fine. Oh, by the way, chase your dreams, you or fail. This is one of my favorite morning shirts. I have a so comfortable shirt. I love that shirt. I bought this shirt like 20 years ago, I know. But um, I'm going to leave you with this uh, poem. And it reminds me. I, I, I love this poem because it's been in a lot of movies. Dead Poet Society is when I think I first heard it. No, no, no. It was in, uh, it was uh, Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield. Um, he sends it, he sa says this poem at the end. 
Um, and Back to School and a Dead Poet Society, I believe it's in, and then a couple other movies. But um, I'm going to read it and just cut the feed. Hope you guys have a good holiday. Take what you want from this, okay? Mm. Pop-ups. Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at the close of day. Rage. Rage against the dying of the light. Through wise men at their end, no dark is right. Because their words have forked no lighting day. Do no, do not go gentle into that good night. Good men, the last wave by, crying how bright. Their frail deeds might, it, might have danced into a green bay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang in flight and learned too late they grieved its on the way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death who see blinding light, blinding sight. Blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on my there on the sad height. Curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light.